Here's the deal, we are on lesson two. You are now ready to take on the next set of Vim commands. So hopefully you've done what I asked in the previous video. You are now feeling smooth at the previous set. You you just you just know them. When you need to delete a word, you're like DW. When you need to delete a line, you're like DD. You just, it just works. You don't have to think about things. You don't have to try to go through that process of, okay, I need to, I want to yank this. How do I yank it? Okay, I should visually highlight it. And, oh, I got to go down. Is that J? Like, you don't want to be there. You want to be fast. So now, I am assuming you've done that. And you're feeling ready. HJKL. Wasty, baby. You just fly right through. You're just, you're just ready. So let's move on. Let's add to the commands let's make it bigger let's make it girthier let's make it amazing right now all right we're back in we're back in one more time same file same everything but we're gonna learn more vim commands so last time we showed the most basic the most elementary movements you could possibly use in Vim, and now it's time to expand. If you expand these, if you become better here, you will notice that you don't just simply increase like maybe three, 4% editing speed. These ones are gonna be one of those like 10, 15, 20, 50% increasers, and it's gonna feel amazing, and there's still a long way to go. Remember, this is just two of six, but you got this. The next set of commands, oh. I remember learning these, and I remember just absolutely just my pants. I could not believe that Vim, you could just do that in Vim. It was amazing. All right, remember last time when I showed you that if you just simply press I, you go into insert mode, and at this point, you can just type away. But you know what's really inconvenient is when you wanted to put a line in between the return statement and the function declaration. So you kept finding yourself doing this weird, like, I, enter, escape, up, I over like it's just like it's just it's, you're kind of like all just knees and elbows right you're not feeling good don't worry Vim has you covered on this one all right so let's talk about that one so the thing I'm going to show you now is O. all right so let's just say I wanted to insert a line below this function and just get right in get right in and ready to get rock what would I do O. O goes into insert mode also puts an extra line Oh yeah, you just got, I mean, literally, you just got a lot faster, and guess what capital O does? Same thing, but upwards. Shift O, oh my goodness, my gracious. I remember this moment when I typed this in and just lost it. I remember being so fast. In fact, I have this weird little habit where when I'm thinking, I will literally Shift O, delete, Shift O, delete, and just do this while I'm thinking, and just run that same little loop over and over and over again, because that moment was so mind-blowing to me that like, still to this day, I can't even help it but remember it. All right, remember the last time we also showed you Y, Y, and P, and how P, sh you know, paste the line below? Well, guess what Shift P does? Just like Shift O, boom, one line up. Oh man, that is just so dang convenient because often you need to paste something, but you need to just simply jump up a line just to paste the thing. And I just, ah! So if you haven't noticed so far today, everything is about like, you're just gaining these new optimizations. You have to take less and less steps. All right, let's say we wanted to fix this. With your current knowledge, what you would have done is you would have pressed L, I, E. Move over one, go into insert mode, E to fix the problem. Well, what happened if we don't need to do that? What happened if you can just press A to move over and go into insert mode? A is just one of those fantastic little time savers that if you incorporate, you're gonna just completely speed up. Not only that, but there's other insert modes that will actually help you get faster too. Shift I to go to the beginning of the, like the first part of this, what is this, a sentence, a line? What is this thing? Go to the first, what is it? Shift I will take you to the beginning of the line, but to the first character. And it's sister, shift A will take you to the end. Just like I and A, shift I, shift A. So you're in a file and you know what you're looking for. Well now, let me show you, let me introduce you to the next thing, forward slash. Forward slash allows you to start searching. Notice that you are now officially in command mode. You can see it on mine, it's just highlighted there in the bottom left-hand side, it says command. Now, if I search and say, listen, oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh, listen, lines, right? It will show up right there, and I can hop through my results by pressing N. And then I can press Shift N to jump reverse through my results. 
So line, I mean, this is like quintessential to any good editor is find. So this is how you do it the Vim way. This is equivalent to control F. Let's just say you're already on the words you want to look for. You want to just simply go to the next occurrence of the word. Well, with your newfound knowledge, you'd have to type in slash listen lines, and then you could hop forward. Well, Vim has a shortcut for you. You press star. Star will jump to the next occurrence of whatever's underneath your cursor. So if I went down to length and I press star, it would hop between all the lengths in the file. If I pressed pound sign, it'd be going equivalently backwards through that exact same list. Once you use star or pound, you can then use shift N or N to continue on your search or just continue to use pound or star. All right, so there you go. You got through another day of commands. Take these commands and internalize them. If you want to be the fastest you've ever been, then just get these ones. They're going to greatly improve your current speed, and it's going to make you feel fantastic. Now, at this point, we're not overloading. You, don't, you shouldn't feel overloaded with commands because you only have a few more. Next video, we're going to jump into some things that are going to help you on an individual line. Because honestly, some of the indiv just using W to hop the whole time, that can be a little bit of a pain. But for now... Just get good at what you have. Make them second nature. Fly on your keyboard. Be that wizard you've always wanted to be. And get the coconut oil. If you get a little hot, you know, just... Just rub it all over your body. Even, even though I did suggest... Rubbing it on your actual body. Maybe just your elbows is fine. I don't... I don't know. Once again, this is how I learned how to get fast at Vim. I took progressive amounts of commands and added them to my repertoire uh, as time went on. So that way I wasn't overloaded. I could get good at something, and that's that. And I found that it actually wasn't very hard to break bad habits because the better version of it, the alternative, was amazing, right? It was so good. There's like, there's no way I'm going to press I, then enter, and, and, and then like H and J, and then try to figure all that. No, O was clearly awesome. Like, I just didn't even have a problem changing my muscle memory. And I think that most people won't. Uh, if you just put a little bit of time, a little bit of effort, you guys will be amazing at this. At this point, it would be a good, it would behoove you to open up Vim. Play with the Vim RC and just familiarize yourself. Why don't you try to just do a remap? A lot of people think that this is a great remap. I personally hate it, but this is a good exercise for you. While you're in insert mode, JJ to exit insert mode. Also, get a color scheme. I suggest Groovebox. Oh, Groovebox, the greatest color scheme ever created. Then maybe even try to get a plugin. See if you can get autocomplete working. Just play a little bit around with Vim. Just get familiar with it. Because either at this point, you can start using Vim. But if you still don't feel comfortable, stay in VS Code. Stay in IntelliJ. Put Sublime in the garbage can and get one of the previous two I just mentioned. We'll get to Vim, but you don't have to jump in yet, but it's a good time to just get familiar. On one final note, I actually use NVim. I really like NVim. NVim is amazing. It has a just incredible community support and the plugin system is just dynamite. So if you want to try it out, give that one a try instead. I personally build from source, a little bit more fun. I feel a little bit more like Hackerman. Hackerman, he's the most powerful hacker of all time. Follow me. I've already kind of told you guys how important it is to really just embrace this moment. You got to take it. You got to learn these movements. You got to feel so comfortable. Or else you're just going to always be in this weird place where you're kind of like halfway relying on the old things you know, maybe using control and arrow keys to, to hop around. I mean, you know, so you're just kind of like, you're just, you're never quite there. You never quite get Vim. And I'd hate to see you say, hey, you know what? I tried, but I didn't get it. If after the next video, you're not convinced Vim is the greatest, you know, maybe it's not for you. But at this point in my life, with the knowledge that you now have, I remember thinking there's no universe that exists that I would ever go back to using control and shift and hopping all around. And then you open up a Mac and you have to press command and you have to use your thumb all goofy. Then you have to use options. So then you're doing like this. Like, I don't want to do that anymore, all right? Just rest my hands on the home, bro, and I want to rock and roll. I want to fly. This video will just ratchet it up a little bit more with some more commands for you to layer on. But for now, get comfy. Get real comfy. Oh, so comfy.
These chairs suck. How can you get comfy on this crap? 